Today we are going to tell you about D-Day. D-Day was Germany against the Allies. The Allies were made up by Great Britain, China, France, the Soviet Union, and the United States. D-Day took place on June 6, 1944, on a beach called Omaha. Omaha is located in France in a town called Normandy. The beach Omaha is about 50 miles long. On one side of Omaha is rocky cliffs, and the other is the English Channel. This beach doesn't sound too bad, right? Well, imagine this beach with big metal X's, barbed wire fences, gunners, dead bodies everywhere, and landmines that could explode anytime and anywhere. Not so easy now, right? You might be wondering what the big X's were used for. They were used to keep tanks and heavy artillery off the beach. The layout of the beach was like this. When you first make it out of the ocean, the first thing you see is the big metal X's and the barbed wire fences. Then there is a big open land stretch with landmines. Then last but definitely not least were the bunkers holding the German soldiers and gunners. At this point, the Germans were outthinking us. Well, that's what we let them think. Truly, the Allied forces outthought the Germans. The Allied forces knew when, where, and how they were gonna attack. This operation was codenamed Operation Overload. To keep their plans a secret, the Allies used code talkers, or Navajo Indians, whose language was completely unknown to the Germans. Thanks to the code talkers, even if the Germans tapped into their communication, the, they couldn't understand this unbreakable code. The second step of their plan was to trick the Germans into thinking they would attack in Pas de la instead of Omaha. To do that, they set up tons of fake bases across from Pas de la Pos. Each base had a runway and multiple blow-up vehicles. Getting the Germans to buy it was the easy part. The hard part was pulling it off. The Allies were supposed to invade months before June, but due to lack of soldiers, they had to wait for more troops. Then June 5, 1944 came around, and they were supposed to invade that day, but weather caused a delay. When they finally got the all clear the next day, General Dwight D. Eisenhower told the soldiers, the hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. Then they were off to battle and crossing the English Channel, while the unsuspecting Germans were waiting for an attack at Pas de la Cos, not Omaha. To cross the English Channel, the Allies used landing crafts. Each landing craft could carry a total of 36 troops. It was a really tight fit. And even worse is that most of the soldiers got seasick. When they finally got to Omaha, they had to go against everything their training told them. Since the gunners were focused on the front of the boat, soldiers had to jump off the sides. Because of the soldiers' heavy equipment, many of the soldiers sank to the bottom of the ocean and never even made it ashore. If the soldiers made it to the beach, their next obstacle was surviving the German MG-42, the first automatic gun in history. It was so fast, it shot 1,800 rounds per minute from up to 1,000 meters away. Thankfully, the big metal X's gave the Allied soldiers a bit of cover from the gunners. The Allies also had some paratroopers that were behind Omaha, trying to get back to the beach as reinforcements. After about two days of constant fighting, Germany finally surrendered. In the end, the Allied forces used a total of 50,000 vehicles, 6,000 planes, 24,000 paratroopers, 11,000 ships, ships, and 600,000 soldiers. Sadly, the amount of captured and killed soldiers are 6,603 from the United States, 2,700 from the United Kingdom, 1,074 from Canada, and from 4,000 to 9,000 from Germany. When the Allied soldiers returned home, many of the soldiers suffered from feelings of exhilaration, love, hatred, guilt, rage, helplessness, disgust, and even fear. The effects lasted for years. Some even carried the pain for the rest of their lives. Many soldiers got into divorces because they changed so much during the war. The guilt of killing people doesn't just go away. It sticks with you forever, just like an annoying fly. D-Day should be remembered so it never happens again. Don't celebrate this day, but recognize the brave souls who gave their life on this day. Here's some facts. An invading army hadn't crossed the English Channel since 1688 until D-Day. 
More than 300 planes dropped 13,000 bombs over coastal Normandy. Captured Germans went to American prisoner of war camps at over the rate of 30,000 POWs per month, and the prisoners stayed in the camps until the Christmas of 1944. Six parachute regiments, or over 13,000 men, were flown from nine British airfields and over 900 planes. Quick quiz. Here's a quick quiz to test what you learned. Question number one, what beach did D-Day take place on? Question number two, where did the Allies make the Germans think they would attack? Question number three, what was the first automatic German gun called? And question number four, how many troops could fit in a landing craft? That was the quick quiz. I hope you learned more about D-Day, the day some people can't remember, but that others will never forget.